and uh, we're live. Okay, so uh, I think I just realized something. It's fine. Anyhow, it's not a big deal. All right, so it's a thing that um, if it had been done right, it could have launched uh, Jeet Kune Do into uh, greater worldwide acceptance um, with a higher degree of legitimacy and much, much less um, charlatanism and uh, chicanery. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. This is uh, broadcast number 99, so we're getting up there. And this is the one about uh, Jeet Kune Do certified Palusa mania, right? So back when, I gotta tell you what that, that name comes from, when the uh, Lollapalooza concerts first started, however many decades ago, uh, whenever we would have like an extended training session. So we could have a JKD Palooza, we could have a Kali Palooza, we could have a Muay Thai Palooza or whatever. So I, I, that, that's where that, um, that name uh, comes from. So as you guys are logging in, um, feel free to uh, say where you're logging in from. If you'd be so kind, hit the like button and then continue to do so uh, throughout the broadcast. And um, get yourselves uh, some, um, some hydration because this is going to take a little bit longer than the standard broadcast, which, you know, tops out at like seven or nine minutes or so. All right. So, so many players in this Jeet Kune Do drama, you've got first generation players, you've got second generation players, and then in some instances, you have a kind of a hybrid second slash third generation players, right? It's so funny. Um, I had barely put up the broadcast, I mean the postcard, right? Announcing today's broadcast. And I looked away from my screen for like a second. And by the time I turned back, there's already a full-fledged discussion and commentary thing going on, right? So I'm gonna pull an Adam Schiff here and uh, I'll tell you a story about how it happened and how it's uh, still happening. So like I said, there are many, many players in this drama, which actually carries a few sub-genres in that we do have period drama, we do have mellow drama, lots of it, we have historical drama, some comedy, and uh, even some tragic comedy. So, Let's talk a little bit about how it all started, right? So if we're talking about JKD certification, then we can start at the beginning with the fact that Bruce Lee himself used membership cards and he did issue a few different certificates during his lifetime. So that establishes a history of certification in Jeet Kune Do. So that's the first generation of JKD practitioners, people like Taki Kimura, James Lee and Dan Inasano issued certificates by the founder himself. Okay, good. Now fast forward to the closing of the three schools, right? And in the case of Inasano, he's told to take like the most dedicated people to his backyard and train them there. And that goes on for a number of years. Then uh, Bruce Lee passes away. There's a period of uncertainty until the decision is made to open up um, a school, which is unofficially or officially called the Kali uh, Academy. So um, now the student numbers start to grow, but the Kali Academy is still not like your average martial arts school in that it's not being run like a business but things are becoming a little bit more sophisticated. And so some of those dedicated people from the backyard, they are given teaching diplomas and responsibilities for, you know, like leading their own classes or stuff like that. Then the seminar thing starts to take off. Now, I don't know if Inosano was the actual first guy to um, launch a, a seminar career, but if he was, then it was his juniors, people whose uh, certificates were actually issued by him. Then they joined the fray at a later date and they started teaching on the seminar circuit as well. So this is a, 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 a next group of players, so to speak, but it's first generation guys 
who did spend some time with Bruce Lee, but whose diplomas, whose certifications came from someone other than him. So like I said, perhaps uh, Inosano was the first guy to launch a seminar career, but I'm fairly sure that the certification structure of apprentice, associate, full, and senior full, I'm fairly sure that that originates with him, um, let's say within the JKD Concepts uh, family. And this is where a lack of professional know-how, one could call it, uh, starts to have a detrimental effect. Because now there is, let's call it a loss of control, because now we're dealing with people not just outside of Los Angeles, but outside of the United States as well. There are reports of people from foreign countries coming up to the States for a seminar or for a camp and then taking their uh, participation certificates back to their home countries and using these certificates to set themselves up as instructors. Now, nationally, there's perhaps a little bit more control because you see the, the, the local people once or twice a year, and then people like me, you saw way more often than once or twice a year. So that introduces the next group of players, the second generation cats who trained with the direct descendants of Bruce Lee. So let me um, tangent off here for a second and mention that there's a whole other consideration that I'm not getting into today, uh, and that is distinguishing and differentiating between certified and qualified. Um, to put it simply, not everyone who is qualified is certified, and of course, vi vice versa. Not everyone who is certified is by any means qualified, if you know what I mean. Um, remember that there are people who have never sought certification who are still um, glowing or stalwart examples of the art, right? But like I said, that's another topic for another time, okay? Um, and of course, I should mention the subgenre of melodrama because that arises when we have the battle lines drawn up in the war of separation between original Jeet Kune Do and Jeet Kune Do concepts because now we have first and second generation instructors on both sides of the playground in this uh, scenario. And then we throw another spanner into the works because alongside the growth of the seminar uh, circuit, what comes into being is the idea of JKD now being taught professionally, whether part-time or full-time. And this is perhaps where some of the best practices of the professional schools, right? And by that, I mean the non-JKD schools. This is where some of their best practices may have helped the JKD clan back in the day. Because remember, this is, this is how I remember it. We were told, whatever the Taekwondo guys are doing, you want to do the opposite. But if we had learned from them, by them I mean like the professional schools, Things like, if we learned about things like how to build your team from within, um, actually teaching people how to teach and uh, offering perhaps a career path, then we might have avoided some of the horror stories that I'll share with you um, in a few moments, right? So one major mistake, if we want to call it that, is that we started rewarding talent with certification, thinking that since our teachers had done that with us, they had rewarded our talent with certification, then we should just copy that formula and return the favor to, you know, like our top people, not realizing that there was actually a difference between us and our top people. So a talented guy is brought to your teacher for recognition and we think that we are ensuring that the lineage continues and that the art is uh, perpetuated. So like Inosano says in, um, I don't have it here, but as Inosano says in the, the art and philosophy book, right? Page 143, he says, um, to me, 
it's important that there be a lineage. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm going to make sure that if I go, there's always somebody. That is why we're here. Certainly well-intentioned. But you know what they say about the path to hell, right? Because now we get first-generation students competing with each other for acreage, for real estate, and right alongside them, we get second generation students competing amongst themselves, but sometimes even competing with first generation students, competing with their own seniors for a foothold in the martial arts market. Some people chase instructorship in all these different arts and what have you, because they think that that will make them stand out in the in the market because they will have the proverbial more to offer so an instructor brings one of his seniors to town to conduct a seminar brings him into town to conduct a seminar the senior is on his personal quest to build his brand so he identifies the students of his colleague who might be ripe for picking or perhaps the students self-identify as potential partners for the senior, right? Rewind this, listen to that again if you didn't understand what I was saying. I remember back in the day, there was a guy who gleefully announced and advertised that um, he was certified under Bustillo, Hartzell, and Wong, and but that his competition was certified only under Inosano. What he neglected to mention in his advertising was that he actually got his start under the Inosano guy. And after two months or so, he inquired about instructorship and he was told about the five-year minimum. You got to spend at least five years as a student before you're considered as an instructor. And, um, as far as I understand, he found that uh, unacceptable, right? So long story short, right? So, but it, what that brings me to is what I call um, the different types of certifications that are out there. So there is the, I feel bad for the guy certification. There's the weekend intensive instructorship certification. There's the, he split from my student and I'm helping him to do his own thing, certification. There's the, I don't know him personally, but he was referred slash recommended by someone I trust, certification. There's the, I haven't worked with him personally, but I've seen his stuff and he looks pretty good to me, certification. And then there is the, he's a connected slash talented slash interested guy and he can help me out certification okay so what's the solution rules guidelines standards whatever you want to call it with integrity god damn it that's the solution the in the early days everyone would have been better served to remember I'll call it a professional caveat, right? Which is your customers, your clients, your patients, your students, whatever it is that you, that you call them in your industry, they tune in to only two, two radio stations. WIIFM, as in what's in it for me. And the second radio station is WCYD FM, as in, what can you do for me? In other words, as harsh as it sounds, people do not care about you. They care only about themselves. Now, if the pioneers had realized, if back in the day it had been realized that what was happening is that we were getting into business, and in some instances we were setting people up in business, then we could have arranged for example, things like the five mile radius, that rule, the five mile radius rule, or maybe even the non-compete rule, 
Um, and if anyone in the organization broke those rules, well then, you're out on your butt. All right? Okay? All right, so hang on a second. Okay, sorry about that. All right? So, here's the thing. You got to examine your motives for doing what you do, for doing things the way that you do it. But you have to know fully why, why you're doing what you're doing. Are you a hobbyist? Are you a professional? Are you trying to build a legacy? It, because if you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it, then that will go a long way in helping you to identify how to do it. All right, you got it? Okay, so, but I don't wanna leave you on the down note. So here's the deal, right? What is it my, my music teacher, Ronnie Mapp is on here. So I don't wanna leave you on the down note. Um, <laughs> um, all is not lost. I have a JKD senior who I know for a fact has said to people, no, you cannot be under me and under my teacher in Asano at the same time. You're either under him or you're under me. Now understand this, my senior was not telling th these guys that they could not train under him or that they could not train under Inosano. He was merely talking, he was talking only about certification and instructorship, all right? So make sure that you understand that. This same senior, I know for a fact, has said to people, wait, let me get this straight. After training at your teacher's school, my colleague, after training at your teacher's school, and after he put you up for instructorship, you left and you opened up two miles away from him and now you're coming to me for seminars or instructorship? I don't think so. So, like I said, all is not lost in the JKD world. All right, that's it. Uh, feel free, share, like, comment, ask questions. I'll go through everything. Um, and uh, if I need to answer anything uh, after posting, sign up for notifications for when we go live here on Facebook. And please, please, please subscribe over on the YouTube. And when you subscribe, hit the notification uh, bell for the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, for the Jeet Kune Do dialogues, and for the FMA files. Um, follow me on Twitter at, um, where am I on Twitter? Twitter, uh, Dwight Woods, and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. At I Love Jeet Kune Do the Quick Skill Series Volume 1 is still available. Coming up on Friday, October 25th, Jeet Kune Do Dialogues episode with Aubrey Lee Grow out of Ohio. Um, he was uh, referred to me by the real Rick Brochier. See, and this is one of the things, I don't know if you guys are, 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 are recognizing this. We, we're, we're slowly building this, this sweet, sweet network, right? Where people are telling me about other people that I should reach out to and what have you. And, and what's happening is that more and more people are, I, I hate to use the phrase, right? But coming out of the woodwork, so to speak, right? Anyhow, um, uh, so that's on Friday, October 25th at, uh, at 6 p.m., right? Uh, today is a beige, brown, or pink day. There's a t-shirt, right? And um, I'll see some of you back here on Friday, perhaps, if not uh, next Wednesday for another issue of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.